Well, hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing great. I uh, come out to an area called Brown River Falls and I did a video of the, the actual falls. I guess it was last year or maybe the year before and I'll leave a link up in the corner here. But uh, my friend Colin was out here, I think last week, and he walked down river a little bit and he was telling me that there's some really great situations where there's lots of little potholes and and cascades going in between the potholes so uh, i've come out here today with colin and unfortunately uh, there's a lot more water today than there was when he was out here on his own so most of the potholes are just well you can't see them it's just a raging river right now so rather than just give up i uh, noticed that on the walk in here there's uh, tons of trillium which are a, a, a woodland flower and they're very pretty they have three leaves and then the actual flowers are white with yellow stamens and then they have three individual petals and there's a lot of them around here so i'm going to attempt to try and find a really great composition with some trilliums the problem that I'm going to have, though, is that today I have the GFX 100S, uh, which is great. The problem is, is that the lenses that I have for that camera can't focus that close. So I'm going to have trouble getting any kind of close-ups of the flowers. So the plan is, is to try and find a composition that includes not only the flowers but also perhaps some ferns or some moss or, or a, a configuration of, of all three or four or whatever it may be uh, so the, the flowers are kind of an integral part of the composition but not just the only subject if that makes sense so that's the challenge today uh, I don't know we'll see what we can find so we're gonna head back up there's like a little plateau here head up to the plateau and uh, see what we can find up there Alrighty, well, <laughs> we, uh, we haven't come across any great patches of uh, trilliums and actually we, we came up the hill from the, from the river there and there aren't very many trilliums in this area whatsoever and then the trail petered out so now we're bushwhacking through uh, this uh, Oregon grape and uh, second growth forest here. But having said that, I noticed that a lot of this Oregon grape has beautiful red leaves kind of mixed in with the greens, almost look like fall color. I'm not really sure why it goes red like that. I don't know if it's old growth or new growth or perhaps the sun uh, kind of changes the color. I'm not really sure, but uh, it makes a beautiful contrast with the green and red. So I found some nice, nice couple of branches coming out here and I'm just concentrating on those with the uh, with the green behind them. Yeah, it's uh, that's quite pretty. It's uh, not a bad start to the to the morning, and hopefully uh, we'll find something else in this area. It's the forest is not terribly inspiring in here, but the greens are beautiful. The spring greens are starting to come out, especially in the uh, in the big leaf maples. Right, I actually uh, found a really nice clump here. Just beautiful. Now, the only issue that I can see straight off the bat is uh, the scene is quite busy. Uh, so I kind of, kind of define what it is I'm going to include and, and what not to include. These ferns here, 
uh, I really love. So I don't know if I can incorporate those somehow and then just have the flowers in there. The background, well, it does get very busy very quickly. So I don't know if I'll be able to shoot down on them or perhaps look up at them. Um, so usually what I do uh, when I'm approaching a scene like this is just use my camera without a tripod because as soon as you set up a tripod you've pretty much set up your angle and uh, I like to try and figure all that out before I, I take a shot or commit to a, a certain angle. There is a lot of deadfall in here. I wonder if I can get rid of some of this without damaging natural flowers. So let's have a look here. It, see, as soon as I go down low like this, it's just including too much of the background. Let's see here. I think in this case, it doesn't really matter which angle I choose, I think it's going to end up being quite, quite busy. Unless, I could try and back up a little bit with a slightly longer focal length, narrower angle of view, Just try and get rid of that background a little bit. So maybe I'll try that. So right now I've got the 32 to 64. I'll put the, um, I should have bought the 45 to 100, but I didn't bring that with me. So what I'll do is I'll put the 1 to 200 on, stand over there and, and uh, see if I can get a slightly different angle. Maybe that'll help. All right, this is really awkward. <laughs> What I've uh, ended up doing is, I do have a, uh, an extension tube. So I'm able to put that on my longest lens, which is one to 200, and just focus a little bit closer. See, originally I was gonna take uh, an all round kind of shot of the, the whole clump, which I might still do, but it is very busy and uh, you know, perhaps it'll work, but it, there's just too much going on in the background. I love, I love the ferns and the, and the trillium, it's just the background. Um, so what I've decided to do in the meantime is take a kind of a medium close-up of three of the flowers on the, the right side. And I think I found a composition that I really like where they kind of intermingle with one another. The foreground flower is in sharp focus, the other two will be out of focus but they kind of fit into a, a little bit of a puzzle. All right, after scrutinizing and scrutinizing, I think I finally got the composition all set up. It's been a bit of a pain because um, I, I have this one to 200 with an extension tube and there isn't an awful lot of wiggle room for focus in there. And I wasn't sure if it would be too long or if I wouldn't be able to get close enough, but I've. I've been able to get as pretty close. This is as close as I can get to that subject, which is fine because without the extension tube, I would probably be, I think it's four or five feet away from the, the subject. And then it would just be too small in the frame. Now, you know, with a hundred megapixels, I mean, you could blow that up, no problem, and, and still have a really great image. Uh, but if I can get closer, I'd prefer to do it that way. Now, of course, the depth of field is very shallow which is fine in this, in this instance because I really want to eliminate that background. So I have the, the foreground trillium in sharp focus and I've stopped down to f8 and then the trilliums in the background are blurry but uh, you can still see what they are but I think they, they complement the, the scene quite nicely. I'll show you what I have here because uh, I think there's some, uh, there's some things in here that would be might be useful for you to, to see. All right, so you can see the, the composition here and here's the foreground flower, obviously, but 
what I really wanted to do was to make sure that, again, as I've said in other videos, that all of these three subjects, including the background, were separated from one another. And of course, being white, your eye is drawn to them straight away. And you can see that all of these little corners here, they're almost touching, but I've tried to fit them in as best I can uh, into somewhat kind of, a, kind of like puzzle pieces, really. And I think they complement one another really nicely. We, we have the foreground flowers, sharp focus, and then the others kind of peter out into blurriness. And of course, the background being so busy, you really need to, to blur it out. What I might do, and I'll, I'll probably try this, is I'll take some shots with the, the foreground flower in sharp focus, but I might do a little bit of focus stacking and take one image with the foreground in sharp focus, another one with the, uh, the mid flower in sharp focus, and perhaps the third one as well, I'm not sure yet, and then combine them and just see what that looks like. That might be kind of a neat effect to, to try. Well, I was quite happy with the end results here with the shallow depth of field. Now I did focus on that foreground flower and of course then the focus starts to fall off. But I think after playing around with the image a little bit, I did take a number of images where I focused on the foreground flower and the middle flower and the background flower and I focus stacked them. And I think I like the end results of the focus stacked uh, image more than the one with just the shallow depth of field. Now to focus stack this, it was a little tricky because when you focus on the rear flower, the foreground flower is so out of focus that it's quite blurry around the edges. So it has a hard time kind of mixing those images together. So I found the best results I got were from uh, a program called Helicon Focus. And then from there, I did have to do some uh, careful cloning around the edges of the uh, the foreground flower because it, it just the whole edge just looked very strange to me and then lastly to finish it off I did have a few images where I had an even shallower depth of field and I sandwiched that uh, to the final image here so that the background was even blurrier than uh, the individual shots with the the individual sharp flowers if that makes sense so overall yeah I, I quite enjoyed the uh, the final results of this scene oh this is really awkward <laughs> maybe better if i just uh use my glasses here Let's see here so most of the images so far I've taken without a polarizer but I thought I'd try a few with a case uh, polarizer uh, there's no ND filter built in or anything like that it's just a straight on CPL I kind of like the glare on the foliage, but sometimes it might be just a little bit overpowering. The only problem with it is, is that you lose some light, two stops or one and a half stops. So I have to slow the shutter speed down a little bit more. Now, luckily, we don't seem to have any wind this morning. So I'm down to 1.3 of a second. That should be good. I've had to underexpose just a little bit because the whites on the trilliums, I don't want them to be blown out. I've also made sure again, even though this is a wider shot, there's five or six flowers and I want to make sure that none of them are really overlapping with one another. There is one that's kind of hiding behind a leaf. That's okay. And I'm just going to bracket a little bit, open up a little bit more. So now we're at one second. Now the flowers are moving a little bit. So what I'm going to have to do 
is up the ISO just a little bit. So I'll bring it up to 400 and then I can bring my shutter speed up to a quarter of a second. And hopefully that's enough to uh, capture the action. You don't seem to be moving around very much at all. As I said, this scene is a little bit busy, but I really do love this clump of flowers, so it is what it is. So I've been looking around for uh, trilliums that are perhaps set against some old sword ferns. The thing is with the sword ferns, this time of year they're still looking a little tired, but you'll notice that there's some new fronds coming up around here. You'll see the, the fiddleheads coming up, so they're not quite up yet. Um, but I'm looking for stuff like this. This looks really good right here. And then there's some trilliums in here and these ferns here. And then just to the right of the camera, there's a, a nice grouping over there as well. But it's trying to find something that isn't really busy. And of course, being in a forest scene like this with a lot of dead fall and twigs and sticks, it does get quite busy. So it's, it's the hard part is trying to simplify it. And I quite like this because it looks like I might be able to get some nice patterns out of the ferns and then have the trillium in the center or just off, off center a little bit. So uh, I'm just going to get my camera out and uh, see what I can find without the tripod. You may have noticed I have a, a new head again, another geared head. This is uh, Arca Swiss is cube. I thought I'd try this head out. Uh, I know my friend Alistair, he swears by it and also Simon Baxter has one that uh, I think that he really enjoys using. Unfortunately, they are very expensive, but so far, the little that I have used it, uh, it is superb. The, the machining on this is just absolutely fantastic. The, the other geared heads I've used are fine. The Sunway Photo is a, is a much cheaper alternative and I did a video about that some time ago. I'll leave it in the link uh, in the corner here. And also uh, the other head, um, sorry I've forgotten the name off the top of my head but I'll, I'll leave the name at the bottom here and I'll leave a link to that video as well. They're, they're fine geared heads, uh, both of them. I found that there were a couple of issues with them though that I, I wasn't quite happy with. So uh, I've decided to, to give this one a try and I picked this one up used because new they're very expensive. So, uh, and it, it looks like it's, there's no scratches on it or anything. It looks brand new. So um, yeah, so far so good. Right, let's see what I can find uh, in this section here. Okay, so this is a little bit busier than I would have liked. Uh, but it's still not a bad subject matter. I love the way that the ferns kind of randomly go in all different directions. So it's just trying to find a composition that's pleasing to the eye and that, um, you know, you have different curves kind of interplaying with one another. Uh, again, I really quite like the glare in this coming off the ferns and the leaves but I suspect it might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to put the case uh, CPL on again. This is the magnetic one, the Wolverine. And um, I'm, I don't know as if I'm going to polarize it all the way. And actually, it doesn't really do that much. See, a lot of it has to do with the angle of the light reflecting off your subject matter and uh, in this case doesn't do an awful lot it's just some of the leaves well let's see here maybe i can uh, get rid of some of the glare in the top there i guess it does a little job so 
again we've lost some light here so I'm gonna have to bring up the shutter speed 1.3 again f16 ISO 100 and I'm shooting this at 16 by 9 so it's a slight pano Right, we're gonna have to excuse the traffic noise here. We're right next to a road here. Um, well, that was a bit of a quick, quick trip this morning and didn't really get to photograph what we had set out to do, but photographing the trilliums was a lot of fun. I really enjoy photographing wildflowers. Uh, probably just don't do enough of it but um, as always I hope you enjoy the video and if you did please be sure to give me a thumbs up that's always appreciated and uh, as always if you are new to my channel and enjoy the content of this channel then be sure to uh, hit that subscriber button also for those of you that might be interested my book Antarctica will be coming out any day now. It's uh, kind of a mix between a, a magazine and a book. So it's called a zine. It's quite small. Uh, it's a reasonable price and it helps my channel out uh, immensely. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link to my website up in the corner here and also down below. All right, folks, thank you ever so much once again. And hopefully I will see you next week. Bye for now.